Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! All right, let's talk about how to balance redox reactions. I've picked some half reactions completely at random from the CRC handbook, so just FYI. Also, we're not going to worry about the cell potentials right now. We can worry about cell potentials in a later video. I just want to talk about how you actually balance these things. So, step one, split these two into half reactions. I can tell that this thing is becoming that thing because they look very similar. I can tell that this thing is becoming that thing that both got bismuth in it. So one half reaction is this. And the other half reaction is this. Now we need to start balancing the half reactions. The first thing to do is to balance the main elements. So I've got two bismuths on the left. I need to have two bismuths on the right. So we'll put a two there. The next thing to do is to balance the oxygens using water. So I have three oxygens on the left. I need to add water to the right. I need to add three waters so that I can have three oxygens. The next thing to do is to balance the hydrogens by adding acidic protons. So we'll add some protons to the left to balance the hydrogens. We'll need six protons to balance the hydrogens. Now we're going to balance the charges by adding electrons. Since electrons only have a negative charge, we can only bring one side down. At the moment, this side adds up to six, and that side adds up to zero. So we can bring down the more positive side. To make this equation true, we'll need to add six electrons to the left side. Incidentally, is this oxidation or is this reduction? Well, this is oxidation because we're gaining electrons in order to do this half reaction. So this half reaction is balanced. It's time to balance the other half reaction. We'll balance the main elements first. They apparently don't need to be balanced because there's one chlorine on both sides. We'll balance the oxygens by adding water. We need to add one water so that we'll have two oxygens on the left side and two oxygens on the right side. We need to balance the hydrogens by adding protons. We will need two protons on the right side to balance the two hydrogens on the water. Next, we'll balance the charges by adding electrons. Negative one equals negative one plus positive two. Negative one equals positive one. We need to add electrons. We need to add electrons to the right side to bring the charge down. We need to add two electrons to make the charge balanced. So negative one equals positive one minus two. That is a true statement. This half reaction then is the reduction half reaction because it's losing electrons. Now, this is good because one half reaction needs to be the oxidation half reaction and the other half reaction needs to be the reduction half reaction. You should have one of both. If you don't, you've probably done something wrong. Now I want to take these two half reactions and I want to add them together. Problem is, the electrons won't cancel if I do that. So in order to get the electrons to cancel, I have to multiply the two equations by some number so that there's the same number of electrons on the left as there is on the right. The least common multiple between 6 and 2 is 6. So I need to multiply the entire bottom reaction by 3. 
that gives me three waters, three hypochlorites, three chlorites, six protons, and six electrons. Now I'll add these two reactions together, adding systems of equations. The six electrons on the right cancel with the six electrons on the left. The six protons on the right cancel out the six protons on the left. The three waters on the right cancel out the three waters on the left. And I'm left with three hypochlorites plus whatever this thing is makes two bismuths and three chlorides. I would never have guessed that the ratio between the hypochlorite and the bismuth oxide was three to one. I would never have seen that coming. The only reason I know that is because I had to balance out the electrons when I added the equations together. This is the true stoichiometry for this equation, so this reaction is balanced. Let's look at another example. We need to split this first into the two half reactions. There's the bromate and the bromide, and then there's the bisulfate and whatever this monstrosity is. I told you I picked these out at random. The first thing we need to do is balance the elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. The bromines are already balanced, so that's fine. The second thing we need to do is to balance the oxygens by adding water. I'll need to add three waters to the right side to balance the oxygens on the left. Now I'll need to add acidic protons to balance the hydrogens. I'll need to add six protons to balance the hydrogens that are on the right side. Now I need to add electrons to balance the charges. Six minus one equals minus one. I need to add six negatives to make this equation true. I need to add six electrons to make this equation true. Let's do it again. The first thing I need to do is to balance the main elements. I need to balance the sulfurs. So I need to put a two in front of the bisulfate. This changes everything because now the oxygens are balanced. I've got eight oxygens on the left and I've got eight oxygens on the right. But the acidic protons are not balanced. So let's add some more hydrogens. Two hydrogens will balance the hydrogens. Good. And now I need to add some electrons to balance the charges. Negative one equals negative two plus two. In order to make this equation true, I need to add one electron to the right side. Now I need to multiply these two equations by some number to make the electrons balanced. I need to multiply the bottom equation by six. That gives me 12 bisulfates, six of that thing, 12 acidic protons, and six electrons. Now I add these two equations together. The electrons cancel. Last time the protons canceled as well. This time they don't. Six protons on the left, 12 protons on the right, cancel, leaving me with net six protons on the right. Last time the waters canceled as well. This time the waters don't cancel. So my net equation is bromate plus 12 bisulfates makes six of these things plus bromide plus three waters plus six protons. Shush. So the stoichiometry between bromate and bisulfate is 1 to 12. But something else is interesting here. We have net 
protons. What does that mean? That means that as this reaction progresses, the pH is going to change. Will the pH go down or will the pH go up? We're making more protons, so this reaction is becoming more acidic. If the reaction is becoming more acidic, that means the pH is going to go down. Lastly, not all reactions are carried out in acidic solution. If the reaction is carried out in a basic solution, we need to modify the equation to represent that. It's very simple to do. All we need to do is add enough hydroxides to cancel out the hydrogen ions. Now, in order to keep this reaction balanced, we would have to add that number of hydroxides to both sides of the equation. When you add hydrogen and hydroxide together, what you get is water. So six hydrogens plus six hydroxides makes six more waters. Bromate plus 12 bisulfates plus six hydroxides makes six of these things plus bromide plus nine waters. The three from here and the six that we just made. So we see that as this reaction progresses we're going to use hydroxides. The reaction will over time become less basic which means a lower pH so nothing has changed. But we've modified this equation to reflect the fact that it's going to be in a basic solution. And now the equation is balanced. Let's try it again. Why don't you pause the video and try to write the two half reactions? I hope that wasn't too challenging. Now that we have the two half reactions balanced, try to balance the tungsten oxide reaction. We need to balance the tungstens by putting a 2 in front of the tungsten oxide. That gives us 6 oxygens on the right and 5 oxygens on the left. So we need to balance the oxygens by adding water to the left side. This gives us two hydrogens on the left side, so we have to balance the hydrogens by adding two acidic protons to the right side. The charges are no longer neutral, so we'll have to add two electrons to the right side to balance the charges. Turns out that this must be an oxidation reaction because we're losing two electrons. Pause the video and try to balance the iodate half reaction. The iodines are already balanced, so we'll balance the oxygens by adding three waters. Now we have to balance the protons by adding six hydrogens to the left side. Now we have to balance the charges by adding six electrons to the left side. Now we add the two reactions together. Go ahead and try it. We'll have to multiply the top equation through by 3. That gives us 3 waters plus 3 of those things makes 6 tungsten oxides, 6 hydrogens, and 6 electrons. And we add these two equations together we get this. We find that the ratio is 3 to 1. Sometimes it's hard to figure out who's being oxidized and who's being reduced by analyzing the oxidation states. Take carbon dioxide for example. Can you figure out the oxidation state of the carbon dioxide?
What about the oxidation state of the formic acid? Well, if you can balance the half reactions, you don't need to figure out their oxidation states. You just need to know who's changing. Alright, time to fly solo. Pause the video and balance both half reactions and then add the equations together. Chromiums are already balanced, so we just need to balance the oxygens by adding water. That gives us five hydrogens on the left side, so we'll need to add five protons to the right side. Now we need to add 0 equals negative 2 plus 5. We need to add 3 electrons to balance the charges. So the chromium must be becoming oxidized because oxidation is lost and the electrons are being lost and flying away. The carbon dioxide is becoming formic acid. The carbons are already balanced. The oxygens are already balanced. So we just need to balance the hydrogens by adding acidic protons. We need to add two acidic protons to the left. We need to add two electrons to balance the charges. The least common multiple between three and two is six. So we need to multiply the top reaction by two and the bottom reaction by three. Ta-da! We add the two equations together. The electrons cancel. Some of the hydrogens cancel. The net reaction then is this. What's happening to the pH over time? Is the pH going up or is the pH going down? Turns out that we would expect the pH to decrease over time. This would be something that you could bet on. If we needed to write this reaction as being expressed in basic solution, we would have to add hydroxides enough to cancel out the hydrogens. but we would have to add the hydroxides to both sides. Four hydrogens and four hydroxides make four waters, which cancel out two of the waters on the left side, which gives us a mess. So now let's rewrite the equation. Same equation, but this time it's being expressed as being carried out in basic solution. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah!